What's up, folks? Sean Wilson here. We're live. How you guys doing um, today, man? Today, today, today. I'm going to do some questions. We're going to do a q and I got 10 questions that I would like to go through. So I want to welcome everybody. If you're here, let me know in the comments. Just give me a comment if you if you can. Facebook, welcome. Uh, YouTube, good to see you guys. I'm just going to jump straight into question one, folks. So first things I want to do is look at this question from Mr. Soul Free 77. Uh, he's asking, um, what's the numbers on this move so that you could play it in every key? And I just want to tell you, man, it's a good it's good for you to want to play things in every key. So that's a great question. Let me see if I could um, play this movement here. So let me do this. I mean, let's try it from the beginning. Okay, so um, I get it. You want numbers, but you got to understand when you're using a number system. Let me let me go to my alternate screen over here so I can show you guys something. When you're using the number system, um, the number system only works um, when the chords follow the diatonic pattern, like major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and major. So it works when um, it follows that pattern. So these chords don't really follow the pattern, but I'm still going to kind of show you what the numbers would be. You have a one. Well, let me first play it. Something like that, right? So um, for those, I would have this as a one chord. This would be a one chord here. Then this would be a seven chord, but it's not diminished. It's not diminished. Remember I said it falls outside of the of those qualities so you can use a seven here but that's a chord there and then you would use a three chord but it would be a three minor a minor nine like that okay and then um and then you have a six chord like this it's a beautiful chord here man let me get that comment off the screen so y'all can see this chord i'm gonna have to wait for it <laughs> and then the next chord would be a, a d13 sus right there so that's a two chord and then they go this then they have this chord here this is by the late Paris Bowens it was his progression this chord here is just it's just a it's a pedal tones because we're moving from this chord to this chord so so it's still a two chord it's still a two because uh, the D's at the bottom and we're in the key of C one two so and then um, I probably go to a seven chord here and then from here to the, to the one. So if I if I were um, if I were doing this and trying to take it to every progression, it, the number system isn't what you need, man. It's the it's just need to memorize the chords themselves. I wouldn't go for numbers. Okay, let's do the next question here by Abby Gray. Um, let me see. For, for an F chord, he is exalted. He's Abby. Uh, I'm gonna keep keep you flat. What nice movements, wow, nice movements. Just wondering what you're thinking when you're playing movements. Um, okay, so the key, the key when you're playing movements, um, the idea with that is that you don't want to think at all. The greatest musicians aren't thinking when they're playing. A lot of people come and ask, they always ask about um, what am I thinking when I'm hearing what I'm playing or when somebody else is playing. I don't think you think, the whole, the whole goal of gaining muscle memory is that it's automatic right so it's like it's like somebody asking what are you thinking when you're talking like you're thinking about what to say but you're you're not really consciously thinking as much as you guys think now if there is something i'm thinking i'm probably thinking about a bass like a bass like what i'm playing in the bass and what chord would match with that but to be honest with you i'm not thinking a lot at all all right let me go to the next question here Hey, y'all. Uh-oh, Delita, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so this question is taken from our website. Um, I'm going to come to some of the... I see some comments here, and I'm going to address those. The, t today is a question, a Q&A, so I'm going to try to get to some of these comments, but let me read this one first, and then I'm going to deviate and go to some of the live comments here. Delita says, hey, y'all, I'm working through the scale charts, and I noticed something concerning the preacher chords. 
I think they're missing the diminished chord to the five. Look at the chart for G major. That chart has a diminished chord. It's missing the five chord. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can actually read this. This is really low. But this, this, let me, let me back up a little bit and tell people what this is. Um, this comes from our web, this chart comes from our website. Uh, those of you who are wanting to know where that is, actually, um, that's coming from a, a course called a beginner course. And it's the scales and triads where you, where everyone has to learn. So if you're on the website and you press scale charts, you'll get the chart that she's talking about here. But to go back to that, um, in this first column, this is good to memorize because y'all need to memorize. If you really wanted to uh, play in multiple keys, what you want to do is memorize each of these columns. So in this first column here would be your diatonic triads. And then in the second column here would be your diatonic sevenths. And then here, the purple, the red, the, the blue, and the yellow, those are the those are the important chords that you need to know in every key. And that's the reason I highlighted that so that everybody could know that that's what you really need to memorize. I realize, I realize it's kind of small here, but um, that's what you need to memorize in every key. And then I gave, I even gave inversions of those. And let, let me see if I could. Yeah, this last line at the bottom here, I even gave how to improvise, like what scale you would use to improvise over each color. This is kind of crazy. I didn't even realize I had that on there. And this is every key. So if, if um, so like for instance, there's C, uh, C sharp, D flat, D, E flat, E. It's already on the site, folks, if you're on the website. Dave. But anyway, let me go back to the preacher chords that she was talking about, that question she had on preacher chords. Um, um, these are be these are made to be printed out, by the way. So you have that first chord, you have the one chord, you have the three chord, and then you have the four, then you have the sharp four, um, diminished, and then you have the five. So yes, Delita, you are right. That is missing. These preacher chords are missing a diminished chord. So if you have downloaded this from our website, please understand that the diminished chord is missing. There should be a chord in between the four and the five. That would be the chord in between the four and the five would be a, um, uh, let me go back to here. So you have the one chord, the three, the four, the, the diminished chord. So it's missing the diminished chord. So add that in there. Now, now that I did that, let me see if I can get to some of these questions here. Um, before I go, because this is really more of a Q and A, folks. All right, let me stop. Uh, let's see, we got one from. Um, good day, man. I see you. Bless you. Okay, Sh Cheryl's here. Welcome. Happy birthday to Cheryl. Um, uh, what's up, man? Outrun. Uh, let's see, Sylvester. Uh, I've been playing for thirty years, and I don't know my number system. Well, man, if if you've gotten by this far, you're probably okay. <laughs> You probably don't need it. <laughs> if you've been playing for that long, uh, you may not need it. Um, and I have another person here who says, uh, how do you hear so quickly? Uh, you got to develop your vocabulary and develop your relative pitch. Those things will work in sync um, to give you, um, to be able to help you hear things quick. Uh, why only limit yourself to YouTube? Why not explore Twitch? That's a good idea. Um, Thomas, I have a hard time hearing or even understanding certain chords. Yeah, Thomas, you know, my, my theory is that your chord, the chords that you're in your vocabulary, you're going to hear, hear those well. So um, a lot of people, you know, just you just need to develop that vocabulary. And remember, it happens in time. A lot of you musicians, the problem is y'all y'all think everything should happen overnight and it doesn't. So you're not patient. I mean, I'm just that's real. I'm not saying that's you, Thomas, but I'm saying this is what I've noticed in general. Like everybody wants everything now. Right. You just got to just give yourself the time, man. Do the work. It's going to happen. All right. Um, next person. Um, digital. My, I've been playing bass with my left hand, rhythmic chords on my right. How do I train my left hand to play chords? Um, you you want to study. Well, for that, that's a good question. Um, for that question, I would say um, you don't start off with chords in your left hand. You start off with two notes. So you would play a perfect fifth for minor chords. So instead of playing this, you would need to know how to play every major chord category in your left hand. So instead of playing this, 
how do I play the same chord if I wanted it to play it up here? See, so, so, it's the same thing. It's the same notes. Look at these notes here. See all these notes? I can just simply take the left hand and play the play what I'm playing in the right hand with the left. And it's really that simple. Play this with the left hand, right? I could play this, choose notes to play the left hand, right? That's right, so see, I have E flat, A, and D flat in that chord, just play that with the left hand. It's just a matter of just, it's just a matter of, um, transferring the notes that you're playing in the chord and take those to the left hand um and that could that could help with that um uh can you show chromatic diminished chords chromatic passing chords i have a um i have a whole hour training on that 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 takes way more time i know what you're talking about you know drop to diminish um when you can something like that but that that's not something i can show in a little bit of a time but yeah those just drop two diminished chords and exactly what you said <laughs> go down in half steps um let me see oh well welcome man welcome 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 mike and don music no question just checking out the live yeah i don't i do this every so often so i'm glad to see you i'm glad you're here um I should probably go. Let me answer some of that later. Let me go on to the. Let me go on to the live now and go to the next question. If he was in the key of D flat, right, then why play a two five to a C minor? Welcome is his question. Stream. We're live right now. So how, how you that's a good question. That's I get that a lot. So basically, the that was when I did a Glenn Gibson when I did the live training on Glenn Gibson. And when he started the song, he's doing Calling My Name. It's in the key of D flat. But when he starts the song, he goes. Something like that, right? So some, so they're asked, their question is, why am I going, why am I playing these notes? Why am I playing these notes? And, and now a C if I'm in the key of D flat. Well, the, the, there's two answers to that. The first one is that he is he's targeting we're targeting the seven of D flat one two three four five six seven so when you're approaching this seven you can use notes outside the key okay you don't have to everything you play and this is a big conception I get all the time because people ask me on YouTube if this was in the key of whatever why is this note flat but the key is only a framework. The key only helps to frame the song. It doesn't mean that every single thing you play will be in that key. Well, that's not a good way to say that. It won't mean that, for instance, in the key of D flat, um, we don't. There's no G in D flat, for instance. Well, it doesn't mean that you'll never play a G. You know, like <laughs> you'll have to play a G, right? Because it depends on what you're moving to. So the key only the key is only a reference for you. It doesn't lock you in to say you can only play notes in that key. Um, and so you just kind of have to know where you're going. You know, in this in in that song calling my name, we were approaching a C minor, so we played a two five one to a C minor because a C minor was the note in the song that we were going for. Uh, let me go to the next question here. Oh, this now this was a tough question. I'm going to read this because this question is tough, man. After viewing, I am understanding whatever chord you are playing, for instance, G flat minor seven, I can play a G flat Dorian scale and make it my own. So if I want to use another mode, I just need to make sure the notes are within the chord, same as the notes. So yeah. All right. Let me do, there's a second question he actually has. I want to read the second question too. Um, when it comes to understanding how to play a locally natural six in the key of C, I just need to play a harmonic minor scale starting on a second degree of C, meaning I'm playing a C harmonic minor, but I can also say I'm playing a D locally natural six. Okay. Let me tell you where this is coming from. This question was come, is coming from our website as well, and I want to give some context in order to answer this question. So this question is coming from a training we have here on modes. 
and this was an hour and a half training and the basic thing I came out with this training was that you don't have to memorize all the modes that you only you should group them into big categories so let me show you one of the things that I kind of came up with on this um, let me go back to that question no that's not the right one yeah on this one so basically you see all these modes listed here you have the um, as you can see on the left side you've got that melodic minor the Dorian two that's another scale then the Lydia augmented that would be a whole different one and then you have the mixolydian sharp 11 and then you have the mixolydian flat six and I've I think on my channel I've discussed I've just taken just one of these and I I would just talk about it like for a long time right so each of these has a different sound and each of these sounds really good you could do something with each of these so it's really cool um, and by the way if you're on the website just download this whole chart I just took this out of the out of the PDF this is just one of the pages there so download the whole thing so you can see everything but but today what I'm telling you guys on live is that I group instead of memorizing 21 because as you can see there's seven modes and three apparent uh, scales right so what I was telling everybody on this live was that instead of memorizing 21 you only need to memorize three and that is the um, the melodic minor the major scale and the harmonic minor because all the other modes derive from one of the th those three modes the other thing that I had said was that um, let me see something else here the other thing I s right I'd say I said if you really want to get good with licks and stuff like that instead of practicing 21 you can start with the four so oh this 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 one okay yeah I remember what this was now this was basically showing that if you're playing a major seven because the modes thing the modes lesson teaches people how to improvise because that's the biggest question I get how do I improvise over this is chord or whatever so this is saying well if you have a major chord you improvise on the top left there you improvise by using an Ionian scale which is just a major scale or pentatonic but if you have a minor chord look down where those arrows are if you have a minor chord if you have a minor seven chord when your left hand is playing see that left hand arrow there when that left hand is playing a minor chord your right hand is playing the you are improvising using the notes in the dorian scale it doesn't mean you just play the dorian scale it's just using the notes help you to frame the improvisation so it's basically saying if you got a minor chord in the left hand play a dorian scale in the right hand if you have a dominant chord in the left hand on the top right there, you play a mixolydian in the left hand. I mean, I'm sorry, if you have a dominant chord in the left hand, you play your mixolydian in the right hand, and so on and so forth. So what he is asking, um, Dwayne's second question, I need to turn this off. So his second question is, so um, in if to play a Locrian chord so he wants to play so in other words he wants to play a minor seven flat five he's trying to improvise over minor seven flat five and he wants to play the locrian because how does he know how to improve how does he know to use a minor seven flat five because down in the bottom right it says a c you see that circle there for those of you who are beginner musicians um th that's my that's <laughs> That's PowerPoint's best way of trying to do a half diminished chord. <laughs> but a half diminished chord is a minus seven flat five. So that's a C minor seven flat five. And that tells you use a Locrian scale to improvise that. And so what his question is, is how do I know what notes are in the Locrian natural six? Well, look where it is. Do y'all see where the Locrian natural six is? It's in that third column underneath the harmonic minor. And so basically the idea is if you know how to play a harmonic minor scale, you also know how to play all the all the scales below it. So he's asking, so all I have to do then is so notice now I'm I'm about to move this chart. So I want you to I want you to kind of remember what I'm saying. Remember where it is. It's the second scale under harmonic minor. Got that? So if it's the second scale under harmonic minor, then Here's a, here's a harmonic minor, C harmonic minor. 
right? So that's the so the local the, so the local natural six just starts starts on the two. It's the same notes. Just start on the on the second note. So right because that's what the chart says. The chart says that the local natural six is the same as the harmonic minor scale. It's just the second. It's the starting on the second note. So. Now, let me go back to your question now that I had to kind of frame his question. So when it comes to understanding how to play a local natural six, I need to just play the harmonic minor scale starting on the second degree of C. Yes, that is correct. Because if you are playing, if you want to improvise over this chord here, so like you have this, right? And you want to know what to do. Right, that's those are the notes I used. It, it was the local and natural six, because in the left hand, when the left hand is playing this, you need to know how to improvise. Now I'm I'm going real fast here, but um, I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna add this explanation to the training. Those of you who may not understand, you may need to log in and get the whole training because this was it's really hard to condense an hour and a half in a, <laughs> a couple minutes. But um, yeah, that's the answer for that. All right. Um, let me see if I have any um, anything else here. Um, hi, do you have the preacher chord scale charts? Those are on um, on our website. Sherilyn can give you uh, if you're on the website, just log in, look under the scales and triads course. Uh, Sherilyn can give you the link to that. If you're not on the website, show you how to get that. Um, let me see if there's anyone else. Um, digital. When you learn one thing with your left hand, it sounds so sweet. That's the only way you would want to play. Yeah, man. Exactly. I, I agree with that. Um, okay. Let me let me keep on going. Okay. Sherilyn is uh, Sherilyn is giving some good info there. All right. So next question: How can this movement be implemented between which chords? Okay. So this question here. I don't remember what video I took it from, so I don't have the video, but I, I just need to remind everybody when you are learning something from me on YouTube, it's, it's the job of the musician to find out where to place that, right? So you really have to find out, I give you examples, I give you my own examples. So I say, hey, I, I like it here. But as you as a musician, you have to be the one to find where what kind of sound you like and where you would like it. And, and, and so you have to do that work of, of making sure you take a video and study that video and put it in your own things. That's how you grow. Let me go to the next one. Is vocabulary just knowing the scales? Is vocabulary just knowing the scales? Um, not quite. Um, so I get what you're saying with this, but um, so vocabulary, though, is more than scales. I want you guys... I, I've had a lot, a lot of people ask me about what vocabulary means and how to build vocabulary, but it's not just scales. You need to say scales as letters of the alphabet, right? It's just like, what do you use the letters of the alphabet for? You use them to build words, right? And so once you have words, you use those words to make sentences. And then with those sentences, you use those sentences to convey some kind of a thought or some kind of idea and you use it to express yourself. So the language, the way that music works in language is a way that music works, right? I don't like how I said that statement. <laughs> the way that language works is the way that music works is what I meant. So just like I said, letters make words, right? And words make sentences and you use sentences to create an idea. So scales... They make chords. They help you to form chords because scales are, they're linear, right? And chords are, are vertical. So your scales will make chords. Your chords will then go on to what? Make songs. Or I would prefer to say that your chords are used to support a melody. And then you use that to convey an idea, a musical idea, an expression. So that's when you go on the piano and you express yourself using all those things. And, and so what I'm saying is the word vocabulary, it means all the many ways that you can use to express yourself. That's all it means, right? So when we say that somebody has a great, a great vocabulary speaking, it means they have a lot of words that they can use to express themselves. 
So when it comes to music, a great vocabulary means you have a lot of chords and a lot of different ways and a lot of approaches that you can use to express yourself. You're not just locked into this one way to do things. You have a lot of ways that you can do it. And, that, and that's the word that I mean. That's what I mean when I say vocabulary. So it's bigger than scales. Um, so that's a great question from, um, from Hoyt uh, Phillip um, Glover. Okay. Next question. First to comment. Okay, I don't remember where this video is. Sean, is there a software for transcribing? Um, no. I well, <laughs> I don't. I don't use software. I when I first started the channel, I did use software. I used a software called um, Transcribe. Let me see if I can find that for you. Um, let me see. It was it was a software called. Transcribe. It was literally called Transcribe. Um, um, let me see if I can find it. Transcribe. I think it was this. I think it was Seven String. I think it was this one. Yep, it was this one. Um, yeah, SeventhString.com. But here's the thing, man. Like, I felt like... Um, I felt like transcription software it's not as it's not as advanced as like our our AI software and stuff like that not for music because it can't pick up timbre it can't pick up different instruments so the stuff that I'm transcribing you got people shouting in a room you got somebody in a camera you got an organ playing and a bass guitar the transcription software don't know that it may know that this is a C but they don't know who's playing it. You got a choir singing a C, you got a, a bass playing it, you got an organ. It, it doesn't, it can't differentiate between timbre within instruments. It only knows just one C. So as soon as you throw a multi-instrument kind of thing in a transcribe software, it will always have a problem. I tried it for a while um, on my channel and I just had to eventually develop my ear because the software wasn't doing it, right? Now it will it will work if... It works great if the piano is the only instrument, right? And then it can say, oh, okay, here are the notes. But even then, if that piano is moving really fast, you're going to have to go in and plug in stuff anyway. And so what I found, what I found, what I was correcting more mistakes than the thing was helping me, <laughs> I, would, I would go faster with my own ear because at least even though I was going slower than the transcribed software, at least... I was, you know, taking it in a step at a time. Whereas when the transcribes off, it would give me this jumbled mess and I'd have to go back and fix everything. And, and then if there's other instruments, it's even worse. So this is just my experience um, with transcription software, my experience with the kind of music that I do. Now, some of you guys, if you want to use this software to um, help you find the, the piano is the only instrument in there, uh, I think it could help with that. All right. So let me go to the next question here. I love your piano. What are you using? Yeah, people ask me that all the time, too. Let me see if I can grab Logic here. Um, um, hold on. Let me Before I do that, though, let me... Before I grab Logic, let me try to get caught up with some of these comments. Um, hey, Kimberly, how's it going? How long did it take you to train your ear? Oh, that's a good question. I think I, so I started the YouTube channel in 2016. Something that people don't know is that I had never transcribed before. Um, so I wasn't coming like a lifetime transcriptionist and all of a sudden here I'm going to transcribe. It was just something I tried to do and I was just good at it. I was naturally good at it. Um, and so I just developed it and developed it. So um, 2016, when you guys saw my first video, that was my first transcription. Um, that was a Philip Feaster song. And then from then on, uh, there were songs that were really difficult, and I would get frustrated as well, because it's difficult. Uh, and one thing I would recommend, because there was a song that it's a move in steps. So do a song that's a little bit, don't come down a level and then go back up, if that makes any sense. Like, it's kind of like, think of it like working out, right? Somebody doesn't just jump to lift, trying to lift like 400 pounds, you know? So start and build yourself up and what will happen is your ear will be like a muscle and you'll find that your ear can hear better and better if you give it time and you and you work on things at your level and then you move up that way at least that's how I did it um and it worked for me um how many hours did you spend practicing when you started when I started I um 
So I was one of those people who was playing as a kid and I didn't want to play and that kind of thing. So <laughs> I don't know, however many they, they made me do, maybe uh, an hour, maybe an hour, uh, not a day. I'm talking about, I don't know, maybe two or three hours a week, maybe uh, at the beginning. Let me see some of these other questions. Uh, what would you need to use the diminished scale to do gospel diminish? Would you need to use the diminished scale to do gospel diminished movements? Um, yeah, I did a, I did a whole, um, so I did an entire training on diminished as well. There's no way I can answer that question. Um, it's not this one. It was, um, let me see here to diminish sound here. I mean, look at this master class, man. Why learning to diminish scale is important. Beginner level diminished stuff, competent level, intermediate, advanced. And then I went into stuff that Eddie Brown did and Glenn. And this thing is an hour and a half, too. And then we got a bunch of comments of people who enjoyed this. Um, so um, <laughs> so that question is a loaded question, man. It's it's you would you don't you would the diminished scale helps. But I think what would help is actually what's being shown in the thumbnail of this masterclass. And that's just knowing that a diminished triad, that's where it starts. You would start from, you would start from your diminished triad and knowing where to go. Cause I'll see a lot of you guys, this is the reason why in my teaching, I always tell you learn things in a proper order, because if you learn things in a proper order, things will make so much sense at an advanced level. And that's why everybody's trying to come to the site now and say, let me go back and fill in all the gaps so that I can understand. Because what will happen is you'll be so far, you'll be so far and that you just won't understand anything you're doing. Is everybody just wants to jump to the fancy diminished stuff. But it, where it starts, where it starts in reality would be knowing that this diminished scale here, this diminished triad leads to a C sharp because it's, it's half step. It goes up a half step. So whatever diminished chord you're playing just goes up a half step. See, that's where it starts. It doesn't start at the diminished, all the diminished stuff and I'm showing on YouTube. It starts knowing that. And then you slowly, you build yourself up. Um, so he's asking for the diminished minus seven, we play C harmonic minor. Well, that's what I was showing in the last thing that it, no, that see that I don't, like the way that's worded though it, yes it's correct but it's so like the way it's worded because um let me go back to that um thing that see it's not the harmonic minor it's a locrian natural six it's derived from the harmonic minor right so in essence you could say you're playing a minor uh you could say you're playing a harmonic minor starting on the second note so yes but it's called a locrian natural six. So um, it was a good question, but I, I just prefer to say for the D minor seven flat five, we'll play a locrian natural six. But then when someone's asking, how do I get the locrian natural six? Then I say <laughs> the harmonic minor, if that makes any sense. So, right. So I would call it the locrian natural six. It's just coming from this parent scale up here. Right. Um, let me, let me go on. Cause I got to um, so, oh, the piano. What software are you using? I forgot to ask that. I forgot to answer that question. Um, let me see if I can grab Logic and show everybody before I go because I have some where I have to go, guys, and I'm going to be wrapping this thing up shortly. So I use a program called uh, Omnisphere, but it's actually Keyscape. So the sound that I use... I'm going to show you the sound that everybody's always asking me what sound I'm using for my videos. So here is, I'm going to drag it over and let's see if we can put this here. And um, everybody wants to know what sound I'm using here. So I wonder if they'll let me scale this out. Yeah, they'll let me scale it. Nope. Uh, I'm not able to. No, they're not letting me scale it. All right. So I use, I use this and I have a combination of sounds. So I use um, I use these three sounds right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, definitely, definitely um, rewind this video and get these three sounds. So the three sounds I use would be the LM, uh, the 
I'm gonna let me do this. Let me solo each sound so you guys can hear it. So that uh custom seven uh C seven custom seven. So here's a solo on that. This is a nice sound. So, and then if I have the um, porta time, this is the secret right here. This sound is the one I put underneath the piano that gives it that that nice sweet sound that everybody wants to know. Here's how that sounds. I love that sound. And I put that underneath that piano and it just gives that, it sounds so nice. So then the piano together with it. And then there's one more sound here underneath that called the Vox, if I want a pad, it's called Vox Pad Mellow. So let me, let me crank the volume up in this and let you guys hear how that sounds. See, see that sound? I got that nice pad. See that? So that pad is coming from that Vox, and that's real nice. And that's the only three I use. Okay. Um, let me go to the next next slide. Let me exit out that. And um, get my last couple questions here. Oh, this is the last question. Uh, can someone share with me the function? This was on the website, um, James. Uh, can someone share with me the function and use of tritones, passing chords, substitutions? Um, yeah, man. Like for substitutions, all you need to do. Let me go back here. I'm gonna try to pull my answer again from the from my website here. So what I would recommend you do for tritones is to go to the dominance course because a tritone is nothing more than a rootless dominant, okay? I'm say this again. A tritone is just a dominant chord without the bass. It's two notes, okay? And let me explain this. So uh, this is why if you want to get good at tritones, you play you you learn about dominant chords. And if you let me let me download this PDF that um here so let's just say a C7, right? Most people, if they're going to play a C7, would just play the first four notes. The one, the three, the five, and the seven. C, E, G, B flat. But if I were to take those notes, and if I were to take those notes and take off the we tend, we tend not to play the five when we're playing a dominant chord, so I'm going to take this off. And without the bass, it's a tritone. So there's a song I did, um, the Corey Henry song when we did, um, da, 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 he's a ball, that one. So he's a ball, so let's say we do a... So... I want a tritone here. So that's my tritone. See, there's my tritone. Now, why can I play that tritone? Because I was about to play an E dominant chord. And anywhere I can play an E dominant chord, I can also play a tritone. All I'm doing is leaving off the bass. So it would be like this. With the bass, it would be like this. But without the bass, it's a tritone. See, there's my tritone. 
So I can either play a dominant chord or I can play a tritone. And this is the reason why I said, um, this is the reason why I said to study the dominance course, because if you know where to use a dominant chord, you'll know where to use a tritone. And by the way, I, I was just about to say this, <laughs> by a good point, this is exactly, all you got to do is take the third and the seven and you get your tritone. Uh, so sh but where's my horn for you, Bio? You get a horn, man, because the DJ horn, because <laughs> I, I was going to say that. Okay, so I think that's it. It's 510. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, kind of wrap this thing up now. Let me see if there's anything else. Um, hey, Sean, I've been following your channel since then. It's helped my playing. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. One quick question. Should I use alternative tuning in my playing in a church service? I wouldn't. I, I mean, unless you find it, you need it. Like there's sometimes I've there, that's been rare for me where I've had to tune differently, where, say, another instrument like the piano could be out of tune. Like, I, you know, or like, like you could be playing with a grand piano, like say you're on a keyboard or something like that, you know, but I wouldn't see an I don't see a need to tune down to 432 at least that's not me but i'm not a i'm not an expert on that so don't <laughs> i'm not an expert i'm just saying i haven't had to do it much um let me see here what are the other sounds um hi sean i can now play pretty cool chords and progressions i kind of have my own sound now how do i improve look man what remember what i told you before go slow if you are if you are playing and you are already improving, don't all of a sudden do what a lot of other musicians do. And 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 uh, you're you're putting your comment like multiple times. So like I see I see it, man. This, <laughs> see it the first time. You don't have to keep. <laughs> you got to keep putting it in. All right, let me do another person. Um, Elijah, what's the best way to learn in all twelve keys? Um. To, to play a song in all 12 keys, but just make sure that it's a song that you know, that you already know the chords for. So, um, you know, so I'm trying to think of, um, so uh, Thank You, Lord is a really good song because it, it uses every single note within a chord. Like, so, thank you, seven, three, six, right? And then thank, there's a two, there's a four, there's a the five. I've already used all the chords. Thank you. So now you take it up, half step. Thank you. And you just keep going up every key, every note, you know? Thank you, Lord. Right? And so every single key, that's it. That's how you learn in all keys. It's not, it's not something where that it's some of you guys may be complicating that process a little bit too much if you're trying to learn that. Um, let me see that. Um, how do I master advanced chord progressions effortlessly? That's a that's a loaded question, man. <laughs> master, advanced, effort. You got three things in there, man. <laughs> you got to take your time, man. Study, study. Uh, uh, okay, I got two minutes left. I learned a lot thanks to you. You've been a blessing to the music community. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I'm glad to, glad that you just uh, that you're giving me those positive words. Does everybody who play piano eventually get hearing or good hearing? No. Um, it depends on their goals. Somebody who's playing, um, who's reading sheet music may not may not even care about developing their ear. If you want to develop your ear, you have to be intentional about playing in a way that's going to develop your ear. Um, so no, everybody's not going to get good hearing good ears just because they play in fact that's the whole reason why i'm here because because <laughs> a lot of people are wondering how does sean hear so yeah that's yeah they, that's that's definitely the case uh let me just do maybe two more sean what do you think about ending a song using a lydian mode eh, i mean i don't know i mean happy, happy birthday I mean, is it, do you like the sound or not? You know, <laughs> I would definitely check out because remember, a Lydian, a Lydian is just the way that I teach Lydian is just simply taking um, 
the way that I teach Lydian is simply taking a major chord, going up a whole step, and playing the major on the whole step. So if it's a C, up a whole step would be a D. You play a major chord on a D, C, and now I have a Lydian. You can see it if I, well, see, yeah, that's how you do it. That's how I see a Lydian, right? I have a whole, I have a really great video too that we did very well on YouTube about the Lydian scale. That one you can see, you don't even have to be on my website to see that. You can just go pop that into the channel. The Lydian scale, Sean. And let me see if I'll show you the one. Yeah, Lydian, brighten your sounds using Lydian mode. That's a really good video. Look, it's got 60,000 views. Um, so that one did really, oh, you guys can't see it. Um, so the, this one right here. So Lydian mode is what, and, and here's where I did some other ones. Okay, it's six fifteen, folks. Um, thank you so much. Let me um. No, let me just get this other thing here. All right, folks. Thanks again. Um, I see all these questions. I guess I'm gonna have to do this more often. <laughs> Y'all tell me to come more often, and I'll come back. You guys weren't telling me you wanted me to come more often, so I don't know what kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all take care, man. <laughs>